Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to walk you through how I approach scoring a scene. So this is a real life scenario from one of the movies I've done. I have given this as a lecture before. So if you've attended one of my master classes, sorry you already know this. Um, I did this scene in two days, so this is going to be two parts, so you can kind of see what amount I did in a day. Um, and so let's play through the scene. It's uh, one of the action cues from Fearless. This would be so much easier if it was a video game. Wait a minute. What if this was a video game? What would you do? I don't know. I'd look around for tools, for power-ups. I wouldn't give up. You know what? I've been living my whole life through a scream. What good is it being fearless in a fake world? It's time to start being fearless out here, where it counts. Wow. Somebody just got off the couch. Let's find a way out of here, huh? Wait, wait a minute! I can't believe I didn't think of it before! That's a sat phone! It's a super powerful walkie-talkie. They link to satellites. NASA-level gear! It could boost our signal. You can fix the communicator. Yes! Now let's go stop Grinch face. Game on. General, you're gonna have to trust me. We're the good guys, and we're going to stop the bad guys. If we can catch them in time. Obsidian. It's even cooler in person. You can take a selfie later. Watch the road. Oh, oh shrimp! Oh! Whoa. Didn't you say you've ridden a motorcycle before? Well, yeah, Planet Master. What? Okay, it's now or never. This is a lot different than a rocket bike. Here goes. I think we're on. Hello? Come in, Captain. Captain, can you hear us? This is Lightspeed. Good to hear your voice again. We got him. Yeah. Arcanus has your babies. What? They're on the Obsidian, but we won't let them get away. I can finally pinpoint your location. Do not let Arcanus absorb those baby powers, or Earth is doomed. Okay, we can do this. I've played every level, I know every inch of that ship. Arcanus is no match for my expert- Oh! Swallowed a bug. Are we gonna catch them? Yes, we will. If we land on top of it, we can get inside through the engine intake. Wait, what? Trust me, I've done this before. Not in real life. Get ready to jump. I will never be ready to jump. <sighs> or we can also go in this way. <sighs> All right, that's our scene. You can see it's a fairly long scene and it has two parts basically, one slow bit and then the action bit. Animation in general is very difficult to do because as you can see, there's so much happening. Like every couple of bars, you need to hit something else. So um, this is like one of the most work intensive things, especially because you also have to do a full orchestral mock-up, of course. We did end up recording this at Abbey Road. I have a couple of videos if you want to check those out of us at the scoring stage, but we still have to do mock-ups before we record. So let me walk you through this one. So this is the scene as it is. Let me mute this. Uh, I'm not gonna explain 100% how I did the mock-up and how I how my template is set up because I have separate videos where I explain all of that because this would really go too far. But um, so how do I approach a scene like this? I feel like I need to first 
talk about how film music in general is approached because there's kind of a, uh, a bit of a misconception about writing speed in general. So I would not open this scene and start coming up with brand new material, writing it from scratch. And I think this is one important thing to understand. With film music, usually you spend a certain amount of time working out themes, working out the sound, working out a theme suite or multiple pieces, doesn't really matter. You spend time um, creating variations of the theme, creating ostinatos, like that's how I spend the first, I don't know, 10 days or something on this project. Just writing all the melodies, counter melodies, getting all the material lined up already, getting it into a session and getting that approved by the production first. Uh, so I don't immediately start writing to picture and most film composers don't. And this is important to understand because there's, first of all, there's a crowd out there that claims they write like seven or 10 minutes of music a day. First of all, you're not writing this kind of music. Like if you're writing this kind of music, if you can get to two minutes a day, you're good. But yeah, you're not writing seven or 10 minutes of this in a day. If someone claims that, then they're probably writing um, a lot of loops or making a lot of audio edits, a lot of MIDI edits, there's a lot of copy paste, whatever it is, um, this kind of music, don't think you have to write like seven or 10 minutes of that, that would be insane. But so the second thing is, we're not coming up with material on the fly. If you're in a film scoring program or you're taking part in these um, film scoring competitions, what you'll very often find is people take a lot of time scoring one scene, but that's because they have to come up with brand new material while they're also scoring to picture. That's a very difficult task, which is not how film scores work. You work out the material beforehand. And so when I get a scene like this, for me, it's more about how do I adapt the material that I already have to this scene. And then as you're progressing through a movie, what happens very often is that, you know, as soon as you have like 30, 40 minutes of music, there will be cues that are very similar to what you already have done. And so you will open the session of that similar cue, do a save as or save backup, whatever you want to do, um, and just adapt the music you already have. It's also very common on bigger productions and especially on TV for a music editor to be there who will take pre-existing music from previous episodes and kind of edit it in and see what cues actually need to be written. So a lot of the speed is coming from doing proper pre-production and not from just being really fast at coming up with stuff. So now that we got this out of the way, now you know how you could do a scene like this in about two days. It's still a ton of work, like they were two very long days. But there's not really much brand new material in this. So if you want to check it out, I'm not going to play it here because otherwise I have to like fight monetization and whatnot. But uh, the soundtrack is out. So if you want to listen to the Lightspeed track and the general blazer hatch, you will have two of the themes that I'm basically using across this entire queue. There's also a villain theme and a baby theme, but those are not in here. The first thing I will do is I will put down markers where things need to happen, just so I kind of get an idea of, you know, where my hit points are, where I need a shift in the music. So this is first one, music in, emotional soft, going on for a while, we have a bit of silence and then here we have the emotional shift, finding courage. So this is where this character looks up and goes, hey, what if this was a video game? What if we could be heroes, you know? Um, so there's an emotional shift here. Before that, it's all just sad and hopeless. Then we got this marker right here. Movement starts where they start to run outside to inform the general that they're actually on the same side and whatnot. The movie's on Netflix if you want to watch it. Then we got this part where the actual motorcycle ride starts. So we got this where they get ready, they start, and then we got this cut where the actual chase starts. This is the heroic main theme. I already put down what I want to put here. Yeah, like obviously that's going to be the main theme moment. Then we got this one where they get into oncoming traffic. So this is basically where the hero moment ends and they're actually getting into danger and they're not actually on top of everything. 
Then we got this cut to the villain, which I fittingly marked as villain. Then we go back to heroic tension. So this is just the continuation of the chase where they also start to talk to the guy, to the actual superhero character and whatnot. This goes on for a bit with the conversation. And then this is the moment where we bring back the heroic main theme because he finds more courage. He was now tasked by the main superhero to take over. Then I put this marker down. There's a joke pause when he swallows the bug. So we don't want to play over the joke. So this is kind of a where I need to put a pause. Then we got this one, last stretch of the chase. So this is like the most intense part of it. <laughs> I just put a marker here that says more, um, which is when he um, like gives more power to the motorcycle um, and goes faster. And then we got this marker, which is the jump, when they jump off of the, the cliff. And then we got music out right here when they slap against, you know, that, that whatever it is against the ship. So that's all the hit points. It's a lot to get through. And then once I have that, I um, I will basically import all this, all the themes that I need, either the piano reductions. For this one, I actually imported the piano reductions. I could also import the fully orchestrated versions, but this one needs so much work that I just wanted the piano reduced version and then work from there and just kind of roughly place the themes where they need to go. And then I will start making the tempo map. Since I knew we were gonna record this live, I tried not to have huge tempo jumps in here. So all of this is playable up until here, and then we need to punch in here, which is fine. You can, you can break up a cue. They were never gonna play this in one go, because um, there's it's so fast that there's too much of a chance that someone's gonna mess up. So they were definitely going to break this up into three parts, namely the first emotional part, then the start of the chase here after this tempo change. And then they were going to break here again at the joke pause because there's a natural pause in the music. So why not use that to punch in? But so I tried to construct the bars and beats and the tempo map in a way that they could play this in like three separate takes, basically. And there's also a lot of shifting around going on while I'm writing. If I notice, oh, if I want to finish this theme here, then I need an extra beat, then I'll just change the meter. You always want to choose meter changes over tempo changes, or most of the time, not always. Because studio musicians, they can very easily play over meter changes, but they don't always play very easily over tempo changes. And so then I will have basically like three empty piano tracks down here or more, depending on what the cue needs really. And so I will write out a piano sketch. It doesn't have to be 100% complete, but this is a very easy way for me to structure the piece without having to deal with orchestration and mock-ups and all that stuff. It's too much. It's too many decisions at the same time. So a scene like this, I will very much just sketch out in a piano track or two or three or four and just get all the lines down. And then I can think about, okay, so now who's going to play what and how are we going to orchestrate this? Usually I will already know in my head how I'm going to do it. But first it's about getting the themes down, getting the theme variations down, getting the ostinatos down, because that way I will also know where I'm going to need a tempo change or where I'm going to need to change the bars a little bit here and there. Let's start listening to this first bit. So this is the, um, the piano sketch that we have. So this is the first bit. I mean, I, I sketched it out further, but let's just look at this bit for now. 
Um, this is the B part of the main theme. So if you listen to the light speed piece, you will notice there's a softer B part or m more lyrical B part. And I specifically wrote that in mind with these types of scenes because I was like, that's going to lend itself really nicely to all the emotional stuff, which is where you will find that B part of the theme in pretty much the entire movie. So you got all the lines down, you got all the chords, all the counter lines. This is basically the sketch. And then um, I will orchestrate that. So this is a nice part where you can choose to use strings, woodwinds, piano, all the soft stuff where you don't necessarily need too much other stuff. And I specifically wanted to use solo woodwinds, not only because we have those at the session, but um, because I also know that later on in the action part, I'm going to be blasting the brass. And so you're not going to hear the woodwinds much. Um, so I wanted to use them here. So, you know, they, they get a moment to shine. So let's start with the strings and listen to this. my greatest string sound but okay <laughs> the focus here is going to be on the woodwinds they're going to be playing solo parts So there's that. Um, we got very little brass here, just to kind of fill in the chords. Not much happening there yet. Then we got choir filling in the chords as well. And so forth and the heavy lifting is really done by piano because I actually liked the sketch quite a bit and so I just kept a lot of stuff in the piano for this And that's all there is to it. This, this part was not very hard to do. So let's listen to the whole thing. And so this is where we're coming to the next part, which is kind of introduced in this 
in this bit here with the I think Lydian scale is it anyway the the brightest of scales pretty much so I figured let's use that for this part and you can see I sneaked in like a 2-4 bar here because I needed more time so this is basically how I make it to the next hit point and it's always a good idea if you have to sneak in these extra beats here and there it's always good to not do it right before the hit point but to kind of sneak it in beforehand I could have hidden this a bit better but it's fine in, in this case so we get to the next part um, which is going to be kind of introducing the brass a lot more. So let's listen to the piano sketch here. So what's happening here? This is the A part of the main hero theme. But what I did with it is it's technically in minor. But so since this is a whole, this is the turning point of the whole movie. So I took the hero main theme and put it in major. And then I wrote a brass arrangement for it that kind of makes it kind of noble sounding in a way. So for the most part, you really just have pedal tones going on here and then a brass arrangement on top. And then you have this little end part here. You can see I snuck in another 2-4 bar again because I needed to go here, and so I needed those two extra beats. Um, this, is, this is filler material. <laughs> this is six beats of I need something to get to there. So sometimes you have that. So let's see how I orchestrated this. So the strings are really only playing um, pedal tones. Not that much going on until the very end. Uh, let's take a look at it. See, it's just... So, not much going on there in the strings. Um, same thing, uh, I just doubled this in the woodwinds just to give them something to do. It doesn't technically have to be there, but you know. When in Rome, why not give it to the musicians to play instead of having them sit idle? Low brass mostly also playing the pedal tones. The horns and the trumpets here are really the, the ones that are driving the thing. So. You will have noticed probably in the piano sketch that it's two times the same thing because it just really fit the scene. So I copy pasted it, but then later when I do the mock-up, I do make a mental note not to do exactly the same thing because you don't just want to copy paste like eight bars. I mean, you can, but I don't like to do that because um, it's so easy to do just a slight variation and just put something into different instruments just to give it a color change. Because um, I think otherwise music can get very boring very quickly. And I don't know, I always take the time to work out these details. I always want to make sure I don't just repeat myself exactly um, the way I had it the first time. So the first time having the horns and low brass do this. And so the second time, I'm having this horn part played by the trumpets. And then the horns just turn into accompaniment here. This 
filler material. God. But so this is just the main theme. This is not new material I came up with. I basically just took the main theme, turned it into major, and then um, just created pedal tone and a brass arrangement on top. Uh, that's all I did here. And then the last thing I always add is the percussion. And it's really just accentuating some of the um, hits here. So it's not doing a ton. <laughs> You know, it, it works without it, but I wanted to add a little bit more to that. So then we're actually past the stage of day one, because this is where the action bit starts and this is where I stop my first day. Because I sketched out the entire piano arrangement uh, first, and then I started to actually do the mock-up and orchestrate this cue. So this is technically where I stopped. I'm just going to continue for a couple more bars just to get to the main chase. And then the main chase is going to be in the next video. <laughs> so this is part of the comedic material that I've used before. But for the most part, this starts out with, again, kind of two bars of filler material. <laughs> and this is also where I had to kind of break this up into different tracks because the lines are starting to overlap because it's not as straightforward anymore. So this is what we get as a sketch. It's gonna sound awful, but that's fine. It's just the sketch. Nobody's gonna hear, I mean, now you're hearing it, but normally, <laughs> normally nobody hears this. This is basically just filler material to start picking up the pace. These are the chords of the main theme, but you don't actually hear the theme here. And then this is actually the military theme because she's like the main military person in the, in the thing. So this... That's the military theme. It's gonna come back several times, but so I figured this is a good moment to use that. And just, you know, broken up chords, ostinatos, some marcato bass lines. Um, so the way I chose to do this is uh, the theme is played by horns, and then those faster lines played by woodwinds and strings, and then the marcato is played by all the low instruments. And you can see again that I did the same thing where I repeat the thing, I, I repeat the theme, in a slight variation higher. So I can assure you what I did was, this is probably played by trumpets, I would assume. I do this a lot in this particular cue where the horns first state something and then the trumpets imitate it. It's a, it's a good way to stretch material, have them do a call answer type thing. So the first thing I did was work out the strings because they're gonna have to play the ostinatos and stuff. So here we go. And then we get into the main chase. This is going to be doubled by the woodwinds, because what else are they going to do? Kind of hate this little transition here but I didn't have enough time to work it out further like I also wanted to avoid this tempo change but it just kind of wasn't possible in the moment I'm sure there's a solution to it I just didn't have it in the moment and so the producers approved this and so I just left it whatever I can live with one bar that I'm not super happy with so here's the brass <laughs> Thank you. 
So brass doing the theme lifting here. Um, and once we got that, I just added a bit of percussion, but actually not much. It's not a ton going on here. And so this is what it all sounds like together. All right, so that is the entire first part of the scene before we get into the chase. So you can see this is about a third of the work, which is fine because this was after I did the entire piano sketch. So this was already there. I already knew how the rest of the cue was going to go. So this is kind of where I went to bed more or less and just continued the next day because all that's left here is do the mock-up. There's no writing left to do. Um, and that's for me always reassuring that the sketch is already done, especially in a massive scene like this one. And all I have to do is now put the right MIDI notes into the right instruments and balance it out. But so the easiest way to do this is always take the instrument first that is going to play the theme or the strings that are, if they're going to do the heavy lifting, it's good to have that as a foundation just so that the loudness kind of stays consistent in the cue. But this is also why templates are important. Again, I encourage you to check out my template videos if you want to understand more what this is all about and the whole mock-up thing. And you can also see that I am definitely holding back up to this point. So I'm not using a ton of the percussion. I'm holding back with the choir still. And, uh, you know, a lot of the instruments have not really played in their full range yet because this is a very long scene. And since I already have the composition down here, I know that I have another 100 bars or something to go and I have to ramp up the tension. So this is also where sketching things out really helps because I know that there's going to be a lot of stuff where I will have to get louder, get fuller and, you know, really increase tension until the very end of the scene. So you don't want to start it off guns blazing because then where do you go? Then you have nothing more to add and um, it's just going to be loud from start to finish, which is not what we want. We want to shape the scene. So let's continue this in the next video and we're going to go through the entire chase, the entire mock-up and all the um, sketch material that I have. So I'll see you next time. Again, if you like this content, like and subscribe and ding the bell. And uh, also you can buy me a coffee. <laughs> I always love coffee.